visitors to Cliftonville's Warple Bay Hotel are invited to enter the world of a bygone era. Hello, Warple Bay Hotel. Can I help you? Built for the discerning guest in 1914, the hotel was one of the most prestigious in Thanet. Still boasting today many of its original features, it has become also a social history museum. The owners, the Bishop family, are in the process of lovingly restoring it. It's not only a business for them, but they live and breathe it. Hotel proprietor and curator of the museum is Jane Bishop. Peter and I fell in love with this building many years ago, way back in the 60s. We used to come down from Medway on the cheap day return from Chatham Station, when we ought to have been at school, and we did our courting on Walpole Bay Beach, which is 50 metres from here. It has a wonderful sea pool. The coastline in Thanet is amazing, always has been, always will be. They can't take our beaches away from us. But Peter and I used to walk from Margate Station along the coastal path and have our picnic on Walpole Bay Beach. And because of the sea pool that's there, there was always water for swimming, whatever time of day or night you came. But in the 60s, we used to walk past here and it represented another world to us, how the other half live. We were like little Oliver Twists with their nose pressed against the pane. And, and it was an amazing place. It was very vibrant and everybody was so happy. The children had pony rides in the mornings and all the guests that came here, they were obviously rich, well-to-do people. And it just, it was just a wonderful feeling. And we walked past here and thought, why can't everywhere be like the Walpole? But we never came inside because we felt it wasn't for people like us. So over the years, we watched Walpole and we always came back when we got married and had the children, we came back because Margate and Thanet were the places to be for seaside holidays. And we brought the children back too and showed them Walpole and told them the story of our courting days. But as we got through the 70s and 80s, Walpole began to look very sad. And we realised that the people weren't coming anymore. The people with money, obviously, were all going abroad for their holidays. And Walpole got sadder and sadder. And every year, we'd come back on our little day trips and say, why doesn't somebody do something to Walpole? And we decided that we were going to, by come hell or high water, we were going to get our hands on Walpole. And we were going to restore her to her former glory. And we were going to found a family business that would keep us all secure. And none of us had ever be made re redundant again. And um, that's what we set out to do. Jane and her husband Peter's dream eventually came true. But their acquisition of the Warpole was, as she describes it, a pure fairy tale. It wouldn't have happened without David Budge. Now, David's grandmother, Louisa, and grandfather built the Warpole in 1914. And he knew, he just knew, he sensed something about us. He knew we weren't speculators or property developers. He knew we had a real feeling for his Warpole his family's business, and he sensed that we were going to try and make a go of it. And do you know what he did? He gave it to us for five years. He said, this is ridiculous. If anyone's going to get Walpole up and running again, you two are. And he made it happen for us. He had that confidence in us. And that's why we're here. And that's where the fairy story started. Because I don't know anyone else who has a story like that to tell. Not only now a hotel, but also a social history museum, the Walpole is home to some incredible memorabilia, donated to it by members of the public over the years. When we moved in, David and his family said, we haven't had time to clear out the family junk. We'll come back tomorrow and get some skips and clear out the hotel, the things that you don't need. And, and we said, we just couldn't believe we were here. And we said, no, 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 it's fine. We'll do it. Don't you worry about a thing. We'll clear out everything and we'll get the place up and running. And when we started clearing out the cupboards, that's when we found one man's trash is another man's treasure and we found the most amazing stuff. Family papers that have been here since the First World War, all the linens upstairs, whether they were darned or not, they were original 1920s linens. All the silverware in the kitchen is 1914 mapping and web, all the teapots and the sugar basins, the, the caster sugar shakers. But when we finally decided to tidy the cupboard, the coal hole, cupboard in the coal hole in the garden, when Peter got the door open, there were a thousand pieces of Walpole crested crockery that had been there since 1946. Still, well, they would have still been in their boxes, but they weren't because the boxes had rot, rotted and we didn't know what it was because everything was covered in coal dust and soot. Uh, but when we actually got it all out, that's what was there. Egg cups and dishes and plates and cups and saucers and all sorts of wonderful stuff. Brand new in 1946, untouched. Anyway, I was spending all my time when greeting, meeting and greeting is my job in the business. 
and I'm front of house. And if people came in and expressed an interest in what was here, because I was displaying the stuff, and they said, oh, isn't that lovely? Where did that come from? And I'd start telling the story. And if they carried on the interest, I started getting out all these treasures, all the old paperwork and the linens and the silverware and, all, and telling the stories. And then I'd put them away again. And the next time somebody walked through the door, there I was again, telling them all the stories. And Peter said to me one day, Jane, you're on a really good sky here. For goodness sake, put everything on permanent display and you get back in this kitchen and help me. And that's how the museum happened. <laughs> we decided to put the Walpole things on permanent display and advertise that we had a museum on the history of the Walpoles. We have so many artifacts and they're of all ages. We go right back, we've got Roman coins now. We've got 80 million year old fossils. <laughs> so, so this museum is no longer the history of the Walpole only. It's a social history museum. Take a step back in time yourself and visit the Walpole Bay Hotel, Cliftonville Margate. The museum's free to enter and is open seven days a week between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. If you have any memories of Kent and you'd like to share them, call me on 01303 817 109 or email julie.maddox at cosmedia.co.uk.